Good evening. Uh, my name is Nancy McIntyre. I work for the Robotics Education and Competition Foundation. I look after our college scholarships and our alumni programs. I want to start with a big thank you to our folks at Kettering University uh, for all they do to support uh, students and events um, for their time in and putting their presentations together for this scholarship webinar. So thank you. It's great to see students from all across the United States. We are represented in California, Texas, Massachusetts, South Carolina, Washington, Michigan, Virginia, Alabama, and Ohio. We are also very pleased to welcome students from the Philippines, Turkey, Egypt, Morocco, and Taiwan. We're glad to have you as, uh, along with us as well. Uh, thank you for submitting your questions ahead of time. Uh, that's a big help for us so we can get some of those answered just through the presentations. You will be able to post additional questions on the question uh, tab uh, that should be on your screen. And we will go through those after we get through the ones that were pre-submitted um, during the question and answer period, which will come at the very end. If you're looking very quickly on our screen, there's a QR code. If you click on that QR code with your phone, you will be able to get some additional information uh, from Kettering University and you are free to, to uh, click on that. We'll make sure we get that up on the end slide again later. Um, we will do some follow-up information. This is going to be recorded. You'll have access to the recording afterwards and there will be a follow-up email from us uh, at the conclusion of the webinar, probably in about a day. Um, with this, I would love to be able to hand this over to David Lucas. So David, without further ado, it's all yours. All right, thank you so much, Nancy, appreciate that. So hi, everybody. My name's David Lucas, and I'm one of the admission staff here at Kettering University. Now, some of you may be wondering, okay, who's Kettering University? So let's jump in the history machine. There's a small little company that's been around for about 100 years or so. They make Cadillacs called General Motors. Hopefully you've heard of them. Well, this institution, actually used to be called General Motors Institute. So this was GM's private training grounds for about 80 years. Now in the mid 90s, GM got out of higher education and we named the university after Charles Kettering, who's one of their leading patent holders. Now, this next thing I'm gonna tell you is the most important thing I'm gonna say, so make sure you dial in right here. This is the only school in the nation. Starting a student's freshman year, students get full-time jobs, working in their field of study for full-time pay. Now that I've got your attention, <laughs> does everybody out there like money? We all fans of it? Want to have it one day? This is a really good reason to try to come here. So what we do that's unique is all of our students actually work in a co-op model program. Now, students will actually come to school here for an academic term that is three months long. Three months, it's all that you're in school for, three months. You take your exams, then you go to work full time as an engineer or scientist for three months. And during that full month, three months there, it's full time pay. After that, you come back to campus, three more months in the classroom, take your exams, head right back to that same employer, three more months full time work. You will do that off and on for four and a half years. When you graduate from Kettering, you'll get your shiny piece of paper that says you've got your bachelor's of science and whatever discipline you chose, plus, You've got a resume with two and a half years of work experience on it because you've already been working in industry. Now we have 400 corporate partners. Students come here, they can work at GM, Ford, Chrysler, Amazon, Google, Tesla, SpaceX, NASA, UPS, NASCAR, you name it. You can pretty much work anywhere and you work full time in your field. Now the reason I'm so passionate about Kettering is because I chose a different route. I went to a Big Ten university, and when I graduated college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I don't want you to have to do what I did. So you come here, because if you're out there right now, you're thinking, hey, Dave, I might want to go into mechanical engineering or electrical engineering, maybe computer engineering, computer science, industrial. Guess what? When students tell me that, the first question I ask is, well, how do you know? Well, if you come to Kettering, you can find out. That's the advantage. If you tell me you want to be an engineer, okay, we're gonna get you a job working as an engineer. Go see if you like it. 
then our students get to go to work and really do the job. And while you're sitting there at work, you might be like, this is great, I love this. And you look over, oh, what do you do? That's really cool, I've never seen that job before. Oh, you're an industrial engineer? Great, that's what I wanna do now. Well, guess what? You didn't know about that job until I got you this one. That's why we got you this job. We put students in the workforce, you can actually see what it is you're going to be doing. Another thing that's unique about the school, you actually take classes in your major starting freshman year. Because if you tell me, hey, I want to be a chemical engineer, why am I teaching you history or arts or humanities? That's not fun. You want to be a chemical engineer. Let's go have some fun. That's what the school is like. We don't teach in lecture halls here. We're all about hands-on learning. So we're looking for students who just want to get in there and do it. And then every three months, you're going to work full time. So you're really going to get a chance to. Now, some things you do need to know about the university. It's not hard to get in here. We're looking for a student to have around a 3.0 GPA. 3.0 or higher, you're good. For this year and the next couple of years, your SAT and ACT aren't required. Um, we're looking for smart students. If you're dedicated and you want to learn, that's what we're into. Now, I'll tell you, the average student coming in has around about a 3.7. But I've got several kids who come in here with three ones, three twos, and they do really well here. We do take AP credits, IB credits, and dual enrollment credits. So whatever you're doing in high school, you're only setting yourself up for success here. The biggest thing though, when you get a chance to graduate, I will be there at your graduation, and the average starting salary for our kids is usually around seventy-five to eighty thousand dollars a year. I have literally recruited students here who make more money than their parents upon graduation. That's what this is about. And then when you graduate, you're probably already gonna have a full-time job. Because as our university is set up, let's hop in an example. Let's say you hire in at General Motors at the age of 18, coming right out of high school. You're gonna work there for the next four and a half years. Who do you think's hiring you at the end of this? Probably GM. You have no bad habits because everything you learned, GM taught you. You think they're gonna pay you, train you, and invest in you for four and a half years and go let you work for Ford? Probably not. But here's the cool part. What if you want to go work for Ford? You can hedge because you can go to Ford and say, hey, I've been an electrical engineer at GM for the past four and a half years. Really? How much are they paying you over there? Come talk to us, how much vacation you got? That's the <laughs> advantage. Our kids have experience. And at the end of the day, that's the one thing that matters. So I will tell you this. Every year, I talk to all my seniors all over the US. And I tell every senior, you're going to have two choices. Choice one, you can choose any school A, not named Kettering. And you're going to sit in lecture hall for about four years. Yep. Arts and Humanities, History, Math, Mix in a Science course. It's lecture hall, you sit there, you study. Some people like that, go for it if you do. But you can choose option B, come to Kettering, and I make you an engineer right now. That's the advantage of this school. So if you're ready to start your career as an engineer, then we're looking for you. So make sure you listen to the rest of this presentation, put your questions in, we're here to answer, and I can't wait to see you on campus someday soon. So with that, Mr. Waldo, I'm passing it over to you. All right, so I'm John Waldo. I'm the Assistant Director of Transfer Admissions, and I'm gonna share my screen now as soon as that's available to me. And uh, one of the things that, that I love about Kettering is that because of what David just described, we've been recognized by US News and World Report for, um, for the quality of all of our programs. So let me get my screen up here. Dave, go ahead and keep talking while I switch my screen. Not a problem, got you covered. So yeah, we are actually world ranked in several rankings. My number one favorite ranking was from the Wall Street Journal. They actually said that our students were number one in the nation for workforce preparedness. So our kids graduate, they are ready to hit the ground running because you've already been working all the way through college, which is great. So is my screen up? Yes. 
All right. Screens up. So the, the building that you see there is the Learning Commons, which is being built as we speak. Every day I go into my office, I love to see the progress. So by the time you get here, you will be able to access this building. So you see a little bit of the accolades there. And lo and behold, VEX Robotics is right front and center because we love robotics students. So most of the time I work with transfer students and you might ask the question, well, why would someone become a transfer student? Well, it could be because maybe because of a family situation, it might be because of finances, or maybe you didn't quite get into Kettering and you're just passionate to do what David just talked about. So uh, go, starting at a community college is a great option to then prepare you to come. And then as I like to say, you can transfer your credits and then transform your future at Kettering. And so our mascot is General Determination. He's an English bulldog. And I just want to let you know that he loves VEX Robotics. Just want to throw that out there. He thinks about VEX Robotics all the time. And as he thinks about VEX Robotics, then he thinks about all these different majors that you can study at Kettering. And you might go, well, you know, a lot of universities and colleges I've looked at, there's like 150 or 200 majors. No, not at Kettering. We have nine majors because we know what we do well to help you do it really, really well. So that's why we zero in and we focus in. So if you do decide that you're gonna do the transfer route and not just apply as a freshman, actually, can I tell you a secret? You wanna apply as a freshman and then see if it's an option to come here and then see what the financial aid is and see what all the opportunities are. And then at that point, if you're not quite sure, then we can develop a transfer plan. I'm right now working with students who we're not gonna see on our campus for a year or two, because for whatever reason, they've decided they're gonna eventually transfer in. And so we've got all kinds of tools that are on our transfer page, which is kettering.edu slash transfer. And anything you don't understand or anything, like maybe the college that you're looking at to transfer from isn't on there, you just call me and we talk about a plan. We talk about developing a plan for that. For transfer students, we're also looking for a 3.0 GPA in college. Um, and then once you get to 24 uh, credits in college, we don't even look at your high school. So really for those students who maybe don't quite get as much financial aid because maybe they're, maybe you had a bad sophomore year, right? I mean, that just happens. And so what you can do, you go to community college, get 24 college credits or more. We don't even look at your high school and it's kind of an opportunity to do an academic reboot. You know, like when you take all of your parts of your robot apart and then you put them back together in something that's really cool and even better. That's kind of how I want to look at it. It's like you can just kind of reformulate what you want to look at. You can apply for free, whether as a freshman or as a transfer student. Now, for transfer students, you can actually start in any of our four academic terms in July, October, January, April. So give me a call or send me an email or set up a time, and we'd I'd love to talk with you about the options because general determination has a seat for you, whether it's this next year or a couple years down the road, we would love to talk with you about Kettering. So right now we don't have a lot of campus visits available except for admitted students, but we anticipate that as coronavirus kind of starts to loosen up a little bit, that those will be available. But in the meantime, you can look at all kinds of archived presentations on our website. Just go to kettering.edu kettering.edu slash visit, and then that will get you into the portal to kind of see all the options that are there. And then on to the next presenter. Hello, I am uh, Michael Collins. I am currently an intern at IFI um, in the VEX Robotics Division specifically. All right, do, 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 do. Let's see if I can't share my screen. By the way, Michael's one of my transfers. I am. I actually just completed my first uh, school term back in January, and I did uh, three years at a community college. Um, so IFI, or Innovation First Internet International, is the parent company of VEX Robotics. IFI consists of VEX Robotics, Hexbug, and Rack Solutions. So Rack Solutions makes a lot of computer hardware and mounting supplies. 
Hexbug makes a lot of toys and the little like mini battle bots. If you see ever seen the Discovery Channel TV show, we make the little versions and the little race bugs that run around on tracks and various toys and STEM related toys. And then the division I'm a part of, and most of you have probably heard of, is VEX Robotics. We do several different types of robotics programs for a wide variety of age groups. Um, specifically, I work with VEX Go, which is the third to fifth grade um, level, making more robotic systems rather than pure robots themselves. Other things that some of our uh, past interns have worked on is products like this. This is a plier tool made for IQ and Go pins because sometimes they're really hard to use in your fingers. And this is the kind of stuff that we get to use and work on as co-op students. We get to work on real projects rather than pushing papers and getting coffee. Some other products that VEX produces is a lot of retail products, such as these toys that um, interns like to work on to develop and work on the instructions and polish, as well as VEX Pro, which is for the bigger robotics competitions. The co-op program slash intern program here at IFI is quite large. I'm currently staying in the intern housing on the property next to the main building. It has 18 rooms within it to house 18 interns. So it's a very large program. This is our office building where all of the design and intricacies of IFI comes from. We have a large cafeteria where all food is provided while you're here. These are some of the art and deco that's around of various robotics related products and themed things. So it's a very heavy robot environment. A lot of the retail products and other toys that are around the office space, it's a very creative space where there's very intricate mechanisms everywhere to help spark inspiration. This is where all the example retail products come from. And we have a mock storefront set up inside the building. And this is the place where I work. This is our VEX lab, where we have parts, hardware, tools, all in abundance to just build and work on our new products and new projects that we have coming. And this is the great part about a co-op program is you get two and a half years of on-the-job experience while in school. So that becomes invaluable to an employer because of the experience that you will have rather than someone else hiring it at the same age right out of right out of college. We have a various digital fabrication labs where we have resin printers, FDM printers, uh, CNC routers, plotters here. This is our model shop where we work on machining and raw prototyping. This is the Rack Solutions um, manufacturing plant, which is across the street from the building that I currently work in. And this is a little overview of where the campus is here. The blue square down in the bottom left hand corner is the intern housing and the smaller building is the main IFI building. So it's about a three minute walk from where you work to where you live. That's innovation first as a co-op. Oh, awesome. There it is. Um, the co-op experience here is very rewarding in the projects that you work on because, like John was saying and the David before him, your co-op employers really do invest in you because they want to get the best possible employee. And they basically get you for two and a half years to make you the best employee possible. I believe that's all I have to say about VEX particularly. So on to the next presenter. Thank you, Michael. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, um, I'm Professor Abhishek Kamaraj. I'm a 
professor in the industrial and manufacturing engineering department. Um, so let me figure out which screen I'm going to show here. Um, there we go. Um, is everyone seeing a blue screen with the uh, additive manufacturing? Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Um, all right. Yes, so I'm Abhishek Kamaraj. I'm an assistant professor in the industrial and manufacturing engineering department here at Kettering University. Um, I teach uh, the freshman uh, interdisciplinary engineering um, class here. So most of the students who um, are here uh, who join Kettering will be taking this class either in the first semester or first term or the term after their first co-op. So I see some of my uh, students here uh, joining. Um, I teach this class along with a couple of other faculty members, uh, Dr. Mahajan and then Dr. Grassman. Um, almost every engineering major student who's uh, um, entering Kettering will be taking this class. We have approximately 300 students taking this class. Um, class sizes are really small, uh, 24 students. It's a hands-on class. You have uh, two days of lab and one day of lecture. Um, so whether you're a mechanical, industrial, electrical, computer, engineering, physics, some business students take this class, um, some chemical, computer science students take this class, and I think there is a new engineering systems major that is starting this year who will also be taking this class. Um, and as the name suggests, it's an interdisciplinary class. So this is supposed to be a foundation engineering class um, help, helping you to understand the fundamentals of design and manufacturing. Uh, traditionally, design and manufacturing was taught as like, here the, here's a part, go model it. Or here's a um, casting, this is how casting is done, and then you just got to see it. Or uh, this is welding, and then uh, you maybe got a chance to do some welding or something. But it was not applied, and the, the students were not having fun. This was back in the day. Um, Actually, this is how it was in my grad school and back in my undergrad as well. Um, so we wanted to change that completely and make it exciting. And uh, um, we had a generous donation from VEX uh, with VEX V5 robots. And um, we in, in, um, integrated that along with some 3D printing and um, hopefully made a fun class, which is the students have to say that. but. Uh, the course outcomes are to learn computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing, um, use state-of-the-art manufacturing processes to create new, new uh, parts, um, and understand basic robot design, assembly, and control. Um, we achieve this. The philosophy of the class is um, um, learner-centered, so its student is at the center of our classroom, and um, everything else is a, a, an activity that is used to, uh, that is guided. Uh, to enhance the learning of the students. So we use collaborative tools. Um, all the, all, most of the projects are group projects, like in the real world. Uh, you'll be in multiple um, uh, groups with multiple people. And um, while the individual projects themselves might not be really tough, um, what you will notice is that it's the time management and the project management uh, that is the more critical aspect that is also the challenging aspect in this class. Um, which is how, what it is in the real world, because it's not just one project that you're working on. You'll be working on multiple projects under multiple managers, maybe, and there are multiple deadlines, and how do you handle that pressure? That's something that you will learn in this class. Um, uh, the, as, as I said, the class has three different days. We meet, we have one day for lecture, where you will learn about materials, project management, CAD, CAM, all that stuff. You'll be listening to me drone on and on and on. Um, the other two days uh, are the more fun days where we have one entire um, two-hour lecture, two-hour lab dedicated for robotics where you will be working with VEX uh, V5, and many of you might already be familiar with that. Um, and the, the other lab will be dedicated for manufacturing where we will teach you about CNC machining, uh, 3D printing, and other finishing operations. Um, now, again, um, these are not project-based classes. These are more of like challenge-based um, classes. So you, you will be given a mission, and then you need to fulfill the mission, be it a robotics mission or manufacturing mission. Um, so with respect to manufacturing, there are three major projects that you generally do. Uh, the first one is um, to make a coaster, um, coaster for uh, your coffee mug, right? 
Um, so that's an example of a poster that a student made. Some of you might be familiar with the Twitch logo there. Um, but uh, uh, students get, so you have complete freedom uh, to, to work within the constraint of the machine. Um, so you get to choose whatever you want to make on the poster as long as it's appropriate. Um, so that'll be the first individual project, but the rest two manufacturing projects are you manufacture, we manufacture toys and we also manufacture some musical instruments. Um, with respect to the toys, you, we actually donate the toys that we make from this class. Um, we donate it to local schools um, and the teachers really appreciate um, all of this and the kids love. Um, on the final day of class, actually, we, uh, the students go and donate it to the uh, local schools and then you also get to play with, with the kids. Um, so those they are your customers. So again, the, the implicit learning here is uh, you're learning uh, to design a part for a customer. And then you also understand the challenges when it comes to designing toys. It cannot be a choking aside. It cannot have any rough edges. Um, if you 3D print something, many of you might be already aware, if you drop it, it might break. And that's not good because now then it becomes a choking as well, right? So those are certain other guidelines. So you're manufacturing uh, with, with certain guidelines there. So, um, and it's uh, um, uh, at the end of the final session, we, we go to the schools and it's um, a really good experience for both the toddlers as well as our students. And then we also have a musical instrument project. Uh, we keep changing the final project. Otherwise you make a puzzle box or uh, during the virtual terms, you have a presentation. Um, but coming to the more interesting part, which is the robotics, right? So that's uh, dedicated an entire day uh, of lab is dedicated for robotics. Um, uh, we used to use VEX V5, uh, V4, but now we are using VEX V5 um, um, in the class. Um, the students first build the original robot, and then um, the, the field is actually set up for a V4, I believe. and uh, uh, the original robot is not good enough to play the game, right? So that's so the students assemble the robot and then they realize that the original robot is not good enough to play the game. Um, so what do they need to do? They need to redesign and manufacture new components for the robot. So that's the whole premise of the class and uh, you get nine weeks to do this. Week nine, we will have the final competition um, and then uh, um, we will have, we will crown uh, the winners, right? I am a 100 champions, um, and uh, there are there is an autonomous um, portion of the competition as well. And so this is very similar to the VEX competition that you might be familiar from um, your high school, just that you don't have the luxury of time, um, like you have every afternoon to work on your robotic stuff, right? This is you have um, seven weeks multiplied by two, so 14 hours of time to come up with this. So there's there's a big time constraint. Um, these are all new people that you're meeting, um, new in your first year of college, and uh, you need to form your team, do your group discussions, and then come up with the solution. So um, along with this, obviously documentation is really important. One thing you will learn as you enter your co-ops is that there's a lot of paperwork that you have to deal with when you're in uh, in the industry. You'll be writing emails and creating drawings and uh, um, executive summaries and stuff like that. So um, we train you to do that in this class as well. So there are lots of deliverables required along with this. So let me see if I can show you. So one of the deliverables is a website. So we had a student group that made a website for their uh, robot. Uh, it opened up in a different web page. So give me a second here. So while I out of this there we go so that's the uh, website that the students created so that's the original robot and then that's the modified robot that the students actually made um, these are the students and they you create your own team of, of policies and you keep each other uh, in check right you create your own performance criteria participation policy you create your own conflict resolutions and things like that and those are the students there um the actual game um so that's the field and then the scoring points are there on the website but uh what i would like to show you is the design log uh, the students maintain a design log and start with their original robot and then um, they enter every 
every week what is their improvement uh, that they did uh, to the robot so in this case they added all wheel drive and then they started 3d printing um, now this is their strategy for their autonomous they're showing off there um, and um, this is a team that ultimately won the competition so they did really well um, yeah and then um, you get to uh, have um, that's their they, they, they explain what are the changes that they made to the robot and uh, um, what, what why is everything important some of their failures many 3d prints fail some of their manufacturing failures that they document all of those stuff and uh, so yeah uh, I think there is a video of uh, uh, unfortunately you will not hear the audio but uh, I think these are videos of their uh, robot uh, performing so let me see if I can play one shot here I think that's their autonomous program. So it's taking in footballs. And then, uh, so they scoring footballs and baseballs. Um, there we go. So that was autonomous um, on, their, on their robot. So let me go back to the present. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's the, that's the battle bots. Uh, we also, at Kettering, we also have the battle bots um, team. Um, they are uh, they have applied to be in this year's battle pod. So that's the next level after Wex, right? Um, so uh, we go. So we have a team that's going to be well. We don't know they have applied uh, for uh, battle pods competition now. Um, um, now again, this is a class that is um, um, this is a course that is um, supposed to be teaching design and manufacturing. But then why do we bring in robotics? Right? The, the core of the class is to learn computer-aided design, design new parts and manufacturing. Why do we bring robotics? It's, uh, it makes things exciting. The competition aspects is actually um, something that um, helps, uh, uh, motivates advanced students, right? It's not now not you competing against uh, or like an exam or something. And again, another thing about this class, no final exams. Students love that. It's the competition and your deliverables, and those are the cool things about this class. And so there is no final exams in this uh, uh, class. That doesn't mean the class is easy. Um, it's actually even more tough, if, my, if I may say so, because uh, uh, you really have to do your work. It's not like a day before cramming, and then you can do well in the exam, and then you forget everything. You actually learn the skills, you apply the skills, and then um, you go forward. Um, so you learn about teamwork, interdisciplinary project management and the competition is a big motivator for uh, students to, to, to challenge yourself uh, to improve. Um, even though you might have used VEX, VEX programs in your high school, how can you improve? So that's the thing. Uh, we also are planning, uh, we use VEX VR products um, during the virtual term. I had nothing to do and uh, thankfully in spring of last year, VEX came out with VR and that is what I actually used in the classroom. Um, and uh, that was um, very helpful. And we recently got uh, a VEX Vercel, so we are planning on using that into the introduction to um, industrial engineering classroom as well. Um, I would like to thank um, the REC Foundation and VEX Robotics for donating um, uh, the, I think, more than 12 uh, VEX B5 robot kits along with uh, lots of um, additional parts and um, the um, we cannot thank uh, the RSA Foundation enough because uh, the students really love this class and uh, um, most uh, about half our students coming into Kettering already have previous robotics experience. So it's it's a familiar setting for them. And this is the first engineering class so that helps. And then for the other half of the students who have no robotics experience, this is a great introduction for them and uh, they learn a lot. So. Um, well, that's 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 your first freshman engineering class. Uh, an overview of what is there in the class. And um, um, hopefully uh, all of you decide to join Kettering and uh, I get to be your uh, faculty. Thank you. And uh, on to the next uh, presenter. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Elena Reed. I am a sophomore to study in electrical engineering at Kettering University. Uh, my first experience with VEX was in high school, my junior and senior year. We just started the VEX 
Rags team back up after it's been like closed for a couple of years with my friends um, with the team coach. And so my senior year, I was secretary and also team captain. And so pretty much what we did during my time at VEX, we studied like pretty much what the background of like what VEX was about. We learned the different parts. We all tried coding because all of us were brand new to VEX. So we didn't really know exactly how things worked. And so my time at VEX in high school was that um, I coach a lot of us to be creative. We were also um, competed against each other. We also got to learn from each other what things we can improve on. And one of the things that I took with me from high school to my IME course with Professor K was how teamwork is very essential. And so I worked, since I didn't have like as much VEX robotics, um, I guess experience, I had enough from high school to take it with me to class. So when I worked with my classmates in the VEX um, competition, um, I worked with people who didn't have experience, people who had a lot of experience. And so we all tried different things to kind of, you know, get everybody hands on, make sure everybody kind of knew what they were doing. Um, some of the challenges that I faced with um, Rex Robotics kids in college from then was like the time frame. And so being a freshman versus um, going to catering my freshman year, um, that trying to get used to that 11 weeks course was very challenging for me. But after a while, once you get used to everything that's going on, you should be good to go. Um, so I was one of the recipients who actually received one of the VEX Robotics Scholarships is one of the reasons why I'm still able to go here today. Um, and so with that being said, I think you guys should really consider catering with VEX Robotics because while I was in the class, I mean 100, I, <laughs> I guess my robot wasn't that great, but I got to see like how advanced people, other people were and like how dedicated they were to this program and like they're really competitive. They're really serious about it. So if you're really serious about VEX Robotics, please consider catering because I feel like you guys would be like, I guess very, that's what we're intertwining. I think you guys would really, really like it. And with that being said, I'll pass the mic on over to our next panelist. Thanks, Elena. Um, so my name is Caden Bowers. Uh, I'm currently finishing up my sophomore year here at Kettering, uh, about five weeks from being a junior. So that's exciting. Um, I'm from the mid-Michigan area, uh, part of Hazlitt Robotics Club, Team 7580C. Um, on the team, I was the designer and the builder. Uh, so I had a lot of experience with the actual physical side, not so much the programming. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer here. Um, so robot or VEX specifically helped me because it's it's all team oriented. You're you're not doing it yourself unless you're crazy enough to be the only one on your team. But um, I'm sorry if you are. The like classes like statics and dynamics, which um, you know I was taking in the end of my freshman year here, actual engineering classes were you know things that you might not realize you're learning like how a load transfers through a system or you know what kind of supports you need to support the tower or your arm or things like that um i was kind of picking up without knowing it and then once i got in the classes i'm like oh this all makes a lot of sense so you're all picking up a lot of uh, design and uh, manufacturing like dr k was talking about um but you don't really realize it so um, the other thing is, like I said, they're people skills working on a team, um, as well as how to carry yourself in meetings and in your professional life, because about half of our time is spent in the workplace. Um, whether it's talking with the judges at competition or networking with other teams at competitions, your ability to be able to carry yourself and present yourself in a professional manner uh, really helped. Um, and then applying for it, honestly, I'm also a recipient of the VEX scholarship here. Um, from what I remember, it wasn't all that much harder than every other scholarship, but it was worth a decent amount more uh, than everything else I, I applied for. Um, and so, you know, we are a private school. It is a little bit more expensive, but the scholarship definitely helps. And the, the atmosphere here, I personally do better in small groups, uh, small class sizes. Uh, professors actually know your name and um, we'll see you in the hallway and talk to you as opposed to a 500 person lecture hall. I think my biggest class was 32 people, uh, which in high school I had like 36. So, I mean, it's it's very one-on-one -on -one and personable with all the professors and all your classes. Um, and then like everybody else talked about the co-op experience really, I mean, how can you not want to get paid? I hate coming back to school just because I'm making <laughs> making money. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot more than when you're your high school jobs. And so it's, um, 
you learn differently there too. So you're not just working. And in my experience, uh, I work for Teneco Automotive, which is uh, the biggest exhaust manufacturer in the world currently. And um, which I know electric cars, exhausts are going away, but um, our co-ops aren't kind of like Michael was talking about, aren't pushing papers, you know. Um, I'm on the big release of a Jeep program that's coming out pretty soon that I was a part of. And so I've actually learned quite a bit in addition that you learn outside of your classes over work term. Um, and I would argue maybe even a little bit better real world experience than, you know, just a bunch of formulas and memorization. It's real world experience that helps you in the long run. And uh, with that, I will pass it off to Kim. Thank you guys. Thanks, Caden. So welcome VEX students. Um, in case you haven't got that subliminal, not so subliminal messaging, we love robotics students at Kettering University. Um, we love robotics. Um, I like to tell students when I meet with them, in your schools, you're ahead of your peers because of the innovative opportunities you have, the problem solving opportunities, you're rubbing elbows with mentors um, that are out in the real world, real world working these jobs. At Kettering University, we keep you ahead. Um, you can tell from the conversation today, you come in and you kind of pick up where you left off as a robotics student. You're back in teams, you're back problem solving, creating, innovating, and then you take that right out into the workforce with your co-op terms. Uh, one of the things that I didn't hear anyone mention, I'll throw it in there, but our co-op students uh, make anywhere from forty to $65,000 over that four and a half years that they're working. Uh, pretty nice uh, financial assistance for your tuition. Our robotics scholarship is up to $5,000 a year for five years. Um, last year in 2020, we awarded $1.9 million in robotics scholarship to 87 of our winners. This year for 2021, we awarded $1.6 million to 72 students. Uh, another nice amount of money, $25,000, can take you a long way. Um, I think probably one of the things I would really want you to know is stay involved in robotics. That is what really sets you apart from your peers. And our co-op partners, David mentioned uh, quite a few of them. It's not just automotive, it could be Google, it could be aerospace, it could be the medical fields because we actually do have a pre-med path. Imagine applying to medical school and you can put on your medical school application that you've already earned two and a half years work experience in a hospital, in a medical facility. Um, same thing if you're looking at business or management, we're not just engineering, however, we're predominantly engineering. Same thing with our computer science majors. Um, I just met this week in South Carolina with a Kettering alumni who works in patent law. They are now looking to take Kettering co-op students because in patent law, an engineering degree gives you a really good upper hand in defending the patents and different things that you're looking at. So it really, um, depending on where you're headed, we can assist you in multiple ways with our degrees. Um, I will tell you for the Kettering Robotics Scholarship, that deadline is March 1st of every year. If you go to kettering.edu forward slash scholarships, you can see the information there. Um, the Rec Foundation has a scholarship portal as well, and you can find Kettering in there as well. So if you forget the uh, URL that we want you to use, you can always check it out at the Rec Foundation's scholarship site. Um, what, what about robotics once you get to Kettering? Um, obviously, your freshman year, you're going to be in Dr. K's class and you're going to get to dabble in that for a while, but what if you want to continue to do that? Well, we have some simple solutions for that. We actually have a VEX University team, so you could be a part of that. Uh, he mentioned the BattleBots. We also have a BattleBots team. You saw a picture of Mad Dog. They have submitted their video application to hopefully get on the television show. So maybe you would be a part of that team. Uh, we also hold various competitions. We hold VEX IQ. We hold the VCR competitions. Students can um, volunteer at those events. We also run college, or not college, pre-college camps in the summertime. So we have um, a VEX IQ camp where students will come in and build a robot. 
we have the um, Vex Go is going to be part of our Lego build and STEM exploration camp. So something that Michael is working on at his co-op job, we're actually going to be using in the Robotics Center at Kettering. And then we are uh, new to the um, Rec Foundation drones. So we are actually going to be holding a drone camp this summer and a drone competition in the fall. That'll be happening in October. But one of the things I would really like to make you aware of would be the student leadership camps. So you've heard these students talk a lot about communication and problem solving. Um, Dr. K's um, student website had conflict resolution on there. Those are all things that we learn in our um, student leadership camps. So when we're done today, Nancy McIntyre is going to announce the winners. We are awarding seven actually we were going to do five we're doing seven scholarships to the VEX leadership camp which will be held virtually for Kettering University so if you're in the Philippines or you're in Michigan or California wherever you're at you can jump on virtually and participate with us in that I think the other thing I would like you to know um, if we have any mentors listening out there we are going to be starting a newsletter for robotics. I'm um, gonna start with the mentors and eventually open that up to students. But if you would like to know what virtual opportunities we might be having for you or what in-person events we might have on campus, if you can shoot me an email, it's K Shoemaker, that's S-H-U-M-A-K-E-R at Kettering.edu. Let me know you'd like to get that newsletter and we will get you signed up for that. And then I think the final pre-college camps I would really like to encourage you to look into is LIGHTS and AIM. LIGHTS is for girls who have finished their junior year. Um, that's a great program because at the end of that program, if you've completed everything, there's a nice scholarship attached with that. So that's another opportunity for you to get those uh, tuition dollars in your pocket. And AIM is for any student of color who has completed their junior year. Both of these camps will be held virtually this year, and both of them have some scholarship assistance if you need um, to be able to attend the camp. So you can find all of our pre-college programs at kettering.edu forward slash pre-college, and it's just P-R-E-C-O-L-L-E-G-E. -E. Um, so that's really, you know, we would love to have you on campus, help you continue your love of robotics. I will tell you that you're very special to us. And I thank you for attending today. And I will turn it over to Nancy. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. We have a question and answer period. So I am going to start to address some of those questions. Um, David, one of the questions, they were interested in what specific programs we offer. I know we had a, a slide quickly there, but could you maybe just share the different degrees that they can pursue? Yeah, so we do, as John stated, we have nine degree programs. I think I've got most of them memorized. So the most popular, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer engineering, computer science, Industrial engineering, chemical engineering, engineering physics, uh, management, and there's got to be one more. John, do you know it off the top of your head? Engineering systems. Engineering systems. Ding, 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 ding. There it is. So, yes. Um, like Kim said, you were not just an engineering school, we do have a pre-med course of study. So students can actually come here as a mechanical engineer and go work in healthcare, which I didn't know this, I started working here about six years ago. That's a really popular thing because if you understand how the valve and the engine works, you understand how the heart valve works too. We'll just teach you some biology and you're good to go. So really good programs here. I would like to add just one more thing. Um, in the engineering systems, you have a robotics concentration. So you can get a degree in uh, engineering systems with the robotics concentration in it or a mechatronics concentration um, or uh, I think the, la the last one is a manufacturing concentration. Um, so um, it's, it's, it's more geared towards robotics students 
Um, so if you really are into going into the workforce um, and apply your robotics knowledge, then that degree program would be suitable. Yeah, I, I would supplement that with um, in the computer science degree, they also have concentrations. Um, you can concentrate in cybersecurity, uh, computer gaming. You can also do some of the concentrations, you can also receive a minor in those. Within the industrial and manufacturing degree, uh, if you're interested in mobility, you can get a master's in that. And in the computer science, you can earn a master's for data science. And we do have, uh, I'll throw that back to David, but we have a way that you can get a head start on your master's. Yes, we actually have an accelerated MBA program here. So if that's something you're thinking you want to do, this is kind of your one-stop shop. Um, we let our students, you get to chart your own course at Kettering, and that's the best thing about it. You tell us what you're interested in, you go find the jobs, we'll set you up for it, and you do what you are interested in. So again, like Dr. K said, if you're passionate about robotics, we can put you, we've got students who actually work at FANUC. If you're interested in aerospace, I've got kids who work at Barnes Aerospace, NASA, Boeing. It's whatever you're interested in, you get to do it here. Yeah, we, I think uh, somebody was mentioning mechanical engineering earlier. Uh, I don't want to leave them out as far as the concentrations they offer, but they offer concentrations in alternative energy, automotive, en auto, autonomous engineering design, or uh, automotive engineering design, uh, bioengineering applications, ma machine design, and advanced materials. So as David was saying, you find your niche and what you're interested in, and then you can really design how you would like to pursue your degree and what concentrations you would like to have. And I think on that, um, are any of the students that are with us today, are any of you exploring or working on a minor or a concentration in addition to your degree? Yeah, um, I'll go real quick. Um, I am potentially, I was actually just playing around with this today uh, online trying to figure it out. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards a, um, the, either the automotive specialty or the machine design and advanced materials specialty. And then I'm also uh, thinking about a applied computational mathematics minor, um, just because, <laughs> I see David's reaction. Um, just because of the uh, computational and statistical work I do actually in my co-op, um, taking a little bit more of those math classes and being able to say I actually, um, you know, have a degree in that is uh, useful. Thank you. I am focusing on a um, machine and materials uh, spe uh, speciality. And then I'm looking into getting a possible economics minor. I am looking forward to getting a minor in applied mathematics and computational and also computer engineering because electrical engineering and computer engineering are so closely related that it kind of makes sense for me to do both. And then I use computer engineering sometimes I call it, I'm not college, my co-op term, Jerome Motors. So I think that would be beneficial to me in the long run. Thank you. So as you can see, um, just a variety even what the different majors and what they're pursuing. Um, so I'm going to throw this one to the students. Uh, somebody asked, how is life as a student at Ketter Kettering University and what kind of job can I work? Um, so Okay, I guess I will attack this. I assume you mean job as in co-op and yeah. not like on campus jobs. So uh, there is a lot. Um, I specifically am interested in automotive. That's what my passion is in. Um, so I interviewed with GM, Ford, um, and then a lot of their suppliers. Like I said, Tenneco, um, I mean, a lot of the uh, employers have been listed, but um, there's basically anywhere you want to work you can work there. If there's not already a co-op there, um, I've had friends where they were the first at their company, uh, they were the first co-op and kind of ushered in the way. Uh, my company personally uh, has about eight co-ops employed and 
there's like 15 of them that have been hired in. Um, and so, and then to answer your second part of your question, not to steal this from anyone else, uh, your the life here is not as rushed as I would have thought. Um, our terms are about 10 weeks with 11 weeks being finals. Um, so they're a lot more of a quick, faster pace. Um, but, and the fact that you're taking 16 to 20 credits plus, um, it's definitely, how do I say this? Um, it's nice to be around people with a similar mindset. Um, and it really actually, helps get things done it's a very small community um i also work at the rec center here on campus there's a very good um, recreational facility and presence on campus and so uh being able to hang out there and like i said just everybody knowing everybody i would like to add to that um i actually previously worked with Penico also before i came here for vex um, and both of my co-op jobs have actually taken me out of state when I was with Tenneco, I lived in Dayton, Ohio, and I'm from mid Michigan. And currently I live just outside of Dallas, Texas to work at IFI. So you do get a chance to travel. And when you're on campus, the atmosphere is so much different. Like if you're working on say a remote controlled skateboard, you would not have trouble finding 10 people that would want to help you with that project. Like it's not hard at all. Um, I actually have been a part of the Kettering campus community since about 2014. I went through their on, uh, on campus robotics program and I worked in the robotics center for about three years. Thank you. Looks like we are about uh, just about out of time for our question and answers. Uh, actually, we are out now. So I will turn it over to our video, which will hopefully give you some more information. Hello, I am Dan Mance, CEO of the Robotics Education and Competition Foundation and a 1991 graduate of Kettering University. The REC Foundation utilizes our innovative, hands-on, team-focused VEX robotics programs to increase student interest in STEM and help develop the Industry 4.0 ready workforce. This is just like what Kettering students experience through the project-focused learning programs and unique co-op experience at Kettering University. I'd like to introduce you to Kettering University's president, at Kettering, we love VEX Robotics students, and we want to congratulate you on making it through yet another challenging robotics season. Your ability to adapt, innovate, and continue to build amazing robots and programs is exactly the skill set we look for in students at Kettering University. So good luck to each team, and we look forward to seeing who wins the championship. At Kettering, all of our engineering students use VEX Robotics to learn engineering design and for friendly competition. One of the biggest things that really stood out to me at Kettering was that you, everything you do is hands-on. That is literally the best place for you. Through robotics, I've learned leadership and hands-on skills that I use in the classroom at Kettering and also in the workforce at GM. I'm a current Kettering co-op here at Innovation First International and my favorite part about this co-op is that it's a wonderful networking opportunity and it's a unique hands-on experience. In 2021, Kettering University awarded 72 robotic scholarships totaling in $1.6 million. Being a VEX student, you can be one of those winners as well. We have six engineering programs, computer science and management. Students here go to campus for a three-month academic term, then go to work full-time for paid co-ops for three months as well. You'll enjoy it. One more word from Kettering's president. And don't forget, we at Kettering want you to visit, to apply, and to succeed. All right, we have a quick poll that we would love for you all to fill out. Um, bring that up here.
while you're completing that, I will just touch on one question that we didn't get to that um, asked about study abroad. Um, I can tell you that one of my children actually did do a study abroad with Kettering in Germany. And um, the, you go there and you take your academic term while you're there in your uh, three month period and then you can return home to your co-op um, or to your academic term here at Kettering. And shortly, we will announce the winners of the scholarship to attend the VEX Leadership Camp as soon as we get finished with our quick poll. So I'll touch base again on the um, I'll study abroad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, we actually do have multiple universities. Um, several of them actually are in Germany. But um, you, you just do your normal uh, rotation of an academic term there, and then you come back to the US and pick right up where you left off. Um, somebody was asked also um, about scholarships and how you apply for those. Um, we have a merit scholarship through Kettering University, and when you apply for admission, you automatically go into pool for that, and that's based on your GPA. Uh, then there's the robotics scholarship, which is also, uh, you'll find that on the Kettering website. Um, there are additional scholarships even after you become a student that you would be eligible for as a Kettering student. But prior to that, we have the Kettering Recognizes Excellence. Um, we're getting ready to release a eSports scholarship. That was something I think we probably didn't mention is that we do have uh, junior varsity and varsity eSports on campus. So there will be scholarships for them as well. And if you're in DECA or BPA, we have scholarships for those as well. So there's a variety of different scholarships that you could apply for. And all of those things are um, you know, helpful for you in reducing the cost of your education. And I think we might be on one of our last questions here. Let me just check and see if there's anything else that was asked. Um, admission requirements, David touched on that a little bit um, with the 3.0. Uh, test optional. Um, the scholarships, somebody asked about what type of jobs you could work in. It can be anything from, like I said, the medical field. It can be automotive. As the sign says behind me, we're not just robotics and automotive. We're much more than that. We have um, a lot of students that, you know, pursue the business and management. So, you know, you can envision yourself working in one of those companies as well. And I I think the poll might be complete. So Nancy, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, one huge thank you to you, all of our presenters. You did a fabulous job. And to the person behind the scenes that you guys don't get to see, that's Holly, who's been bringing up all the poll questions and running video and pulling slides for us as we've needed. Um, and then also helping us in the chat feature uh, where we've been able to go back and forth. So thank you, I appreciate the assistance. Um, so we've got seven scholarships 
uh, for the VEX leadership camp in the summer. Um, and don't panic if I read your name. I have everybody's email addresses and I will send something out to you uh, tomorrow as a follow-up. So you'll have my email and then um, we'll get back in touch with the uh, folks who were selected. So let me call off those names. I'm gonna do the best I can with the names. We've got Sebastian Williams, William Shaley, Vani Offmalegram, Ian Candelario, Gabriel Bentley, Hudson Simpson, and Justin Boveroff. Um, each one of you has earned a, congratulations, uh, has earned a uh, VEX Leadership Summer Camp Scholarship. Um, and I will follow up with you tomorrow to get you some information, then you can get back in touch and I'll have that information and then put you in touch with Kim. Uh, one last go around, if you didn't already use the uh, QR code on the screen, uh, go ahead and take a snap at that. Um, I thank you very much for your time. My apologies, we've gone over by a couple minutes, but I think we had some really good information for everybody. Um, and it looks like we held every, just about everybody uh, through the last little bit of this. So thank you very much for your time. Our presenters again at Kettering, uh, we are grateful for your assistance. Um, we appreciate your partnership and look forward to working with you, doing more wonderful things for the students in our VEX Robotics program. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Holly. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Kettering family. See you guys later.